everybody, welcome back to another quick tie. I'm Tim Hepworth here with Fly Fishing Board River Outfitters and Thursday Night Live Fly Tying. And today we are gonna be tying up the Charlie Boy Hopper. Great little pattern. We wanna thank Rocky Mountain Fly Shop for sponsoring this quick tie for you guys. Uh, we are gonna be tying out of season five, episode 12 already. You can see that there. Um, if you don't already have a season five kit, which is what I'll be tying out of, uh, you can head on over to our website, www.flyfishingboarder.com backslash TNLS5, and you can still grab one today. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this video if you are tuning in. Drop a comment. We want to know if you're part of the Quick Tie Squad, and uh, maybe there's some prizes ahead in store for you as well. Let's head on over to the vise and get started. So first thing we're going to do, you can see the fly right there. Uh, we are going to get our TMC1008 hook. Sorry, 100 in size eight hook secured in our vise. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is open up our kit. You're gonna see you got some uh, some tan foam in there. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm first off gonna kind of measure a length uh, coming down the whole body that's gonna extend just a little bit behind the body. I'm gonna kind of mark that with my thumb. I'm gonna come in, find the center of that foam and pop the hook right through it. Then I can pull my hook out of the vise, swivel that up to there and then re-secure this. It's a little bit different style of tying with foam than we've done in the past, um, but we'll take you through. It's gonna make lots of sense here in a sec. I'm gonna be tying with some UTC 140. I'm going with a dark brown bronze color this time. I think it accents that uh, tan foam quite nice, gives some nice appearance to the segmentation. So I'm gonna start my thread just behind the eye of the hook. Go ahead and trim out my tay again. Now I'm just gonna take some thread wraps all the way down to the foam. Kind of got to work around that foam a little bit to start with. Then bring your thread back up to just behind the eye. Now I want you to go ahead and grab just a piece of scrap foam or even cut a little thin piece off of um, the bit that we gave you in your kit. And we're going to tie this as a piece of under foam to help secure this and hold this so it doesn't spin around the hook on us. So all I'm going to do is this is nothing special here. I'm not trying to really accomplish much, but just put this down on top of the hook shank. So I'm going to take this back. If I left my thread down just in front of the barb, Pull tight there, and all I'm gonna do is pull up on that foam, and it should break off right there. You can discard that, and then I'm just gonna do some open wraps over this foam. I do want it compressed down so it's not bulky, but I do wanna leave that kind of textured feel to it so that it's gonna actually help us hold that foam in place. Now I'm gonna actually take my thread, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get it out of the way on the opposite side of the vise that I normally would, <clears throat> just so I can work with this now. So the next thing I need to do is I need to bring this foam, I'm gonna swivel the short end piece, so this is the piece that I measured to be just a little bit longer than the hook itself. I'm gonna bring my foam up like this, I'm gonna take my finger, I'm gonna press my eye of my hook into it, so it gives a little bit of a mark on there, okay? So I can just see that mark. I'm gonna go in there with my scissors, and I'm gonna poke a hole. Be sure not to cut through the foam, we just want a simple little hole in there, and we're gonna pop the eye of our hook right through that. So now I'm gonna come here, press it in, and just pull until the eye of your hook comes through that foam. Okay, it's gonna look like that. Just pop through the bottom. Now, the next thing I want you to do, I want you to go over, if you've got some super glue handy, it doesn't have to be anything special, dollar store super glue, whatever it is, um, and we wanna put a little bit of super glue down right on top of this foam and extend it back just a little ways um, into that tail section of the fly. We really wanna be able to get this foam to stay in place on top of the hook shank. So I'm just gonna go in, whoop, that was a lot, a lot more than I wanted to be on there. Spread it out a little bit. If you've got the brush type, it is, it's much better, easier to, uh, to apply without making a mess. Just gonna apply a little bit like that. And if you got a little bit much in there, you can try to get some of it out. But I think that that's gonna be all right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold this back over. I wanna make sure that, that uh, the foam stays up right by that hook eye. And I'm gonna press that bottom piece of foam into the top and I wanna keep Try to keep the foam pretty much stacked right on top of itself. I'm gonna press it together all the way down. Really important that back here by this back finger that that's pressed hard and firm because we're not gonna be putting thread wraps back there. We're just gonna be cutting it. So then I'm gonna bring my thread back and my first thread wrap is gonna be right where I left that thread there, okay? So I'm gonna come up and over the foam making sure it's a nice straight circle around it. And I'm gonna pull thread wraps down into that foam. I'll take a few more. I like taking a few extra wraps here because it really gives that kind of segmentation feel to it. You can really get a nice barred contrasting color. 
Now, we've talked about this in the past, but as a good reminder of how we advance our thread forward on a fly like this without showing it on the bottom. So I'll tip this so you can see it. But we're gonna make a total of four segments, including the back. So the back one, we're gonna have three in the middle and then the head. So when I'm coming to make my next one, I'm gonna cross on the top portion of the foam and then come around for my next segmentation, make a few more wraps. So if I show you the bottom, you can see, you can't tell that I did that on the bottom. You can see it on the top and the top doesn't matter because that's not what the fish is seeing. I'm gonna do another one. It's like so. And if that super glue is holding, that foam should be right up on top of the hook shank. And I'm gonna come do one more. Make it, try to split that right in half. You don't want the head to be drastically larger, but you do want it to be a little bit bigger than the rest of the fly. And if, just make sure you always tip it under so you can see the underside and make sure that your wraps look like they're stacked on top of each other, like so, and they don't look too bad, okay? Now, <clears throat> next piece I'm gonna do right away is I'm gonna grab a razor blade if you, if you got one. It's probably the best way to cut the shape into this tail is I'm gonna slide my razor blade down the fly. I'm gonna kind of pull up on that foam. And as I get here, I'm just gonna start making a cut, right level off the body, move that back and forth till I cut through the foam. So you can see how that tail is actually tapered a little bit. And then I'm gonna come in with my scissors and I'm just gonna take a little bit of shape on the back, taking those square corners off on both sides. So it looks like that. Okay, that's gonna be the back end of this hopper and how it's tapered. Okay, I'm gonna bring ourselves back one segmentation now to right here. And I'm gonna go grab another material we have out here. So this is a, um, a web wing we're gonna use as the underwing. Okay, so this white material like so. I need it to be just generally in length the length of the fly, so I'll cut myself a piece square. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna round it off with my scissors. And this is just gonna be the underwing. We're gonna have an overwing as well with the hair. Just so I took the, the corners off, rounded it out. And now I'm gonna lay that right on top and I want that to extend just shy of the back of the overall foam portion. I'll just keep my finger on top of it right there, do a wrap. Make sure it's staying right on top and I can snug it down. I can come in here and I can trim that out. Like so. I'm gonna advance my thread one more time. This is where we're gonna do the rest of the work. It's gonna be up here at this portion. Before I have anything else in the way, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually add some simple eyes to this. So I'm just gonna go right in the middle of that head and just use a permanent marker to make a dot. Giving a bit of an idea that looks a little bit like a like an eye on the fly, probably doesn't matter, but we do it anyways. Um, and now what I'm gonna do right on right here is I'm gonna grab two rubber legs. So we got some rubber legs like this and tan. I'm gonna separate them so I got two separate ones and I'll stack them back on top of each other and I'm gonna tie them in right in the middle, right on top. I'll take a couple wraps just to secure like we normally do and I'm gonna pull one set to one side, one set to the other. Now I'm gonna go back down the fly one more time. I'm gonna cross back to that next one. I'm gonna pull both of these legs back and I'm gonna secure a wrap right here. Two wraps. Now I've forced those legs back, making it appear a little bit more like a hopper. It sends the direction of the legs to the rear portion of the fly and I'm gonna bring it back up here. Now final piece of the puzzle is we're gonna put a deer hair wing in here. So you got a patch of deer hair in your kit. Go grab a healthy clump, nothing too crazy. We don't need a, a ton of hair, but um, once you pull out the under fluff, it, it does minimize it a little bit. So grab a decent chunk like that, tip it upside down, pull out all that fluff. If you got a comb, go in there and comb it out. We wanna get rid, out of, get rid of all that fluff that's in that stacked in that hair. It'll help it flare for us a little better. Once I do, I'm gonna take this clump and I'm gonna set it in my Hair stacker, like so. We'll give it a couple wraps on the table. Now that it's stacked up, we'll reach in here, pull it out. Make sure I got all those little hairs that are kind of hanging on their own out, making sure that stayed nice and stacked. Work it in my fingers. Now I'm gonna measure a tail, or a wing, sorry. It's gonna extend from the tie-in point just to the edge of the body at the back. When I tie this in, it's gonna flare, it's gonna stand up, and that's okay. 
kind of the purpose of this is the, the top wing, but I just wanna make sure I get my measurement right first. Then I'm gonna switch hands. I'm gonna trim this, leaving myself a little extra space because I'm actually gonna use some of that deer hair to stand up in the front and make a little bit more of a, a bullet shape in the front of the head. Go ahead, get a gathering wrap. I'm still pinching up on top so that hair can't spin around the body and you see how that flared. Take a couple of wraps through the butts. When I let go, this should be standing up nice and tall, just like so. Work it down a little bit with the thumb. Now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and whip finish this fly. So I'm gonna bring my whip finish tool over. I'm not gonna go crazy here, just a few turns. I'm gonna use a little bit of resin on the bottom. I'm gonna trim out that tag in. Once I got that where I like it, if there's any hairs that are kind of out on their own, you can fix that now. I'm gonna bolt, bring both of those legs forward together, pinch them together. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna cut about half of the leg off. So I want the front legs to be a little shorter than the back legs. And these ones, I'm gonna pinch them back along the body and I'm gonna cut them off right at the back of the foam. One and the other. And I'm gonna take a leak, take a look, <laughs> take a leak, take a look. Make sure that those front ones are slightly shorter than the back ones. So I'm gonna take a little bit more off that side and that side. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna flip her upside down and put just a little bit of resin only on that final tie-in point. Use a little bit of Solarize Bone Dry, just a touch of it. Don't wanna build up too much on there. I'll just cure it with my light. Flip it back over. And there you have your Charlie Boy Hopper. Pretty simple pattern. Not a lot going on with it. A little different technique than we've used in the past uh, with the foam. But as you can see, it makes a nice segmented body. Uh, makes a pretty realistic looking hopper. Lots of different color variations you could add to your box, but I suggest, uh, yeah, you give it, a, give it a try out there on the water. All right, guys, this has been Tim Hepworth here with Fly Fishing Bowl Outfitters and Thursday Night Live Fly Tying. Thank you for joining us for another quick tie. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Drop a comment if you're viewing. And uh, we'll see you next week for another fly.